guys, what's up? It's Greg Fraser here with Jing Shang Quoshu. I have a really good question that came in from one of the uh, subscribers. Uh, they're asking about boxer shoulder. Uh, this is something I've dealt with, having bo coached boxing and MMA and all that stuff for years. Uh, it's a very, very common injury. It happens a lot of times uh, from people letting their arm drag. There's a couple ways that people do this. Either they're telegraphing and reaching back, okay? Way back here to deliver the punch, all right? If I'm doing that and I hang behind, say I'm working on this thing here, and I go here, and my shoulder drives past, or you see it this way, my shoulder drives past, okay? This is where the injury is created, all right? It's created by that pulling through and putting pressure right on the tip or the area where your rotator cuff is attached, okay? This can cause a sublex, it can cause this location, it can cause impingement. There's a whole bunch of reasons you can get here, but usually for a boxer's shoulder, as we're talking right now, and not just a weakness in posterior muscles, usually it's because of the way you're punching, okay? And if you're punching and you're laying this swing slingshot thing go, okay, there are benefits to it. The only difference is you can't let your hand get caught behind you. If my hand's caught behind my shoulder when my shoulder turns through, this is a big problem. This is where you're gonna get dislocations and all the problems, mainly sublexes and dislocations from doing this boxer shoulder, okay? When I do that, if I catch something while my body's still rotating through, here's where the problem is. So, a couple things. Let me show you two ways that these do, they do it. They either pull back, okay, open up, and throw a slingshot thing here, okay? This is okay, but if you're doing it, you want your shoulder. Look at where my head is. People stand up and they throw the hook like this, okay? My shoulder's pointing up, all right? My hand's following and my body turns through. It's all kinds of injuries. If you're gonna throw a whipping style punch, it's better to use it rather than a fish hook, which is your flat fist this way, okay? Or kung fu style fist right here where you're going through, which is good for reaching your punches. But if you want to throw a whipping one, okay, it's better to keep your forearm level flat hand. And the way you do that is you want to go into your rotate your shoulders and think of dropping the shoulder and taking your shoulder blade down into your back pocket. If you do that, you can whip, okay? The key to this though, is easy and as I'm doing this whip, I'm not trying to let this get out here, okay? Whichever way you like to throw your hooks. Don't let it hang way out here. Not only are you telegraphing everything, okay? But again, you get caught behind. The other way you see it is people leave with their shoulders first and then the hand follows. And all I have to do is catch something right there where I'm not going and there's the injury. All right, so let's talk about recovery on this, okay? If you're doing it. Correction on your movements is, first of all, if you're throwing the punch, try to come out and then turn the corner, okay? Come out to your punch, turn the corner. Keep your punches in tight to your chest and turn your punches. See that? Elbow stays in front. There's nobody back here right now for me to reach back to, okay? Keep it in, turn, boom. Keep it in, turn. As I rotate, keep that closed into your body so you can deliver that punch. If you have questions, whether you're doing it, where you're doing a good punch or not, start by throwing your elbow, okay? A lot of people start punching their hooks and they go off in a line on a 45 degree angle. Hooks come back to you, pulling you back into me. All right, let's talk about some, some techniques on recovery for your shoulder right now, okay? So there's the common ones, which you see, just taking any weight or band, sitting at your 90 degree, and doing your rotator cuff exercises, okay? Trying to keep it there. These are obvious. Second one is here. Everybody who's had a rotator cuff injury knows these ones, okay? Third, opening the arm away. Basically what you're doing is trying to take your thumb and turn, okay? Don't lift and do weight lifting like this where the thumb's facing down because my shoulder, the tip of my chromium process is locking off the rest of my shoulder movement from the ball and socket, okay? So when you're doing recovery or rebuilding your rotator cuff, what you wanna do is thumb backwards, okay? Lift up, bring the baby fingers forward, 
as you're doing this rather than dumping out, okay? All right, so let's look at some new ones I can do with you. And these are great. They're using the martial arts, so it's even cooler. Let me get a stick, one sec. All right, so let's begin here, okay? I'm gonna rotate this a little bit for me. All right, so let's begin here with a staff and how you can use a staff or a dowel, whatever you have to make this work. First one that's really good for your rotator cuff, if you have an injury for building, is getting a nice movement, okay? You don't need a lot of weight. And of course, later you can add body bars and increase the weight and build the rotator cuff even stronger. But these first ones here, this is called an earth twirl. The way you do it is you start palms facing down, okay? I'm starting with a stick on one side of my body. I'm gonna rotate the tip backwards. Let's look at this one that just has the weight on the tip, okay? I'm gonna rotate it backwards. As I rotate it backwards, I'm gonna pull through. Notice that rotator cuff movement, good, okay? Once I get level, I'm gonna snap the other arm out and bring it all the way back through, okay? Rotate it up to the middle, snap, back, through. So you get this motion, snap, through. I'm doing this, I can switch stances. If I'm doing this as an exercise, I can go wider grip, which is gonna pull my shoulders and pull everything at the same time to make the movement more of a stretch. So this can be a dynamic stretch, or later on, you can start adding the weight to it, okay? And using weight with it, which is great. Okay, I recommend these bars for rotator cuff. Another one is starting here, okay? Notice my hand, palm facing up, palm backwards. I'm gonna bring this across my body and catch it. Across the abs, let it open up that arm. So it's essentially doing this motion, rotator cuff. But I'm adding a little bit of weight and a little bit of momentum that springs loads, okay? The heavier the weight, the more you can get the abs into it. Boom, here, okay? So again, run it across the abs, catch it. Run it across the abs, catch it. Good, very nice. Keep that one going. So you're just working on it, all right? Nunchucks, another great technique, okay? Working similar to that rotation where I'm going back, okay? I'm using the weight to roll it back. Target your own chin, boom. That's the motion we want right there. Don't throw it way back, let it drop to the side of your elbow, not over your shoulder. Okay, you don't want to take this, especially when you're doing weights. Up, drops, catch underneath the elbow, strike under your own chin. Got it? Boom. Here. See those? Very nice. One other thing that I really like, like one of these here, okay? You can do all kinds of things, right? So as I'm doing this, you get your four pounder, eight pounder, whatever you feel comfortable with, two pounder, and you're working on bouncing off the body and bringing it through. Good. This motion, bop, is what you want. The back motion, let the momentum come back, bounce off your body. So I'm not trying to swing downward, I'm swinging upward, okay? Boom, and I can change the angle, up above, okay? Cross, level, again, level, this goes to touch my back. Boom, switch it. Any way you wanna do this, the motions are still there. A lot more fun to do it, doing it this way, okay? One other one you may do, there's our back up here so you can see. Rolling, what you want to do is let it go up and drop. Up and drop, I'll back up again, okay? So I'm finding the momentum, let it fall, bring it up. And what this does is as you go with it, 
it helps you use those, that momentum to get that stretch to pull your shoulder up and out. And as we do this, I can switch it. I can simply take a step back with my left foot and pull it over my head. And there's the down forward motion. So I'll turn it back and going down forward motion. Okay. Try to bring it through your center line, over your head, and not just flat, okay? You wanna have a mechanic, proper uh, connect chain movement. So here, if I wanted to go and switch this again, so if I'm here, see your nose on one downward. If I wanna switch the rotation, I just step backwards, drag, and it's now going upward. Step backwards here, pull, and I'm now going forward, okay? So, again, drag for backwards, pull for forward, okay? Now, for your rotator cuff, you, more, you want to do more of your upward reverse swing, okay? You don't need a lot of weight. Do the round like this for like, do a full round. Switch it. So, guys. Here's just a couple of additional exercises because I do see that there's a lot of people that don't have uh, a lot of stuff to recover their rotator cuff muscles, okay? You're primarily looking at all the muscles attached to your shoulder blade. You wanna think of it that way. So, when you're punching, a couple things. Don't let your arm swing out here. Don't let your arm get out here, okay? Keep it in front of you. So keep the elbow in, come out, turn the corner. Okay, it's a lot harder for them to see that. You see a little bit of whip, okay? So if I am gonna whip, just make sure that the fist beats the shoulder, okay? Pop, you gotta get that. Same with your uppercuts. Don't let those get caught. They're not so bad, you're not usually gonna get a big injury. I get a bicep pull from an uppercut, but the principle's the same, okay? I don't wanna telegraph way out here. I don't want to reach way back here to punch. I want to keep it in tight, and I want to keep my punches, boom, right in. Turn, boom, okay? Hide your punch, keep it close, and turn with your punches. Boom, pop, okay? All this type of stuff, keep it in. Stop doing this, okay? All right, guys, hopefully this, you'll, get something, you'll get something out of this. I like your comments. If you have injuries, I do a lot. I use the martial arts as a tool to work with post-physical therapy. I work with a lot of people with disabilities who, or people who've had catastrophic injuries or may have mobility problems. If you have anything like this, if you have any concerns, if you're in a wheelchair, you wanna know some self-defense techniques, if you have mobility problems or an injury that can't let you do standard martial arts, ask me. I'll show you how to change it. I'll show you how to adapt it. And that's what Jing Shen's about.